Welcome back to Cuisines and Cocktails. I'm your host, Chef James Jens, chef and owner of Dinners with Class in Wisconsin. And today we're gonna start out by making the quintessential Wisconsin cocktail. It's a brand new old fashioned or an old fashioned. Um, today we're gonna do a, a sweet bourbon old fashioned. We're gonna start by putting a couple of maraschino cherries and a little bit of the juice an orange in the bottom, a little bit of sugar, and some bitters. And then we're going to muddle it. And this just gets all of the flavors of the orange zest and liquefies the sugar. And we're gonna leave that right in the glass. Top with ice. About shot and a half to two shots of bourbon, brandy, whiskey. And then we're gonna to top off with soda water. Give it a quick stir. Garnish with an orange and a cherry. And there's your quintessential Wisconsin old fashioned. When we come back, we're gonna start by making a mushroom duck cell that we're gonna to use to make a beef wellington today. Come back and enjoy some more mushrooms and tenderloin. Welcome back. So we're gonna get started on the beef wellington. Beef wellington is one of those things where you can actually do multiple steps of it a day or two in advance and it actually works out almost better. And you can do it however many people you wanna feed. If you have a full beef tenderloin, you wanna do 10 to 12 to 14 people, you can do that. Or if you just have a section of a roast, we can, like as we do today, we can do a smaller one. It's all the same process. So in a hot pan, we're going to take some salt and pepper seasoned beef tenderloin, a little bit of butter, Just kind of move it around. And we're going to want to get a hard sear all the way around on the tenderloin. And this is the pan that we're gonna build all the other components of this dish in this pan. I want to start by creating some beef fond, which is the residue that is when you sear proteins, you get a caramelized, caramelized protein on the bottom of your pan. We want all that to, to, to build the flavors and the components of this dish. Well, that's searing, I'm going to dice up a red onion. And this, the size doesn't overly matter because if, it, if it's too big for the end purposes, we can, we will more than likely just puree the mushrooms, onion, and the pork tureen together to make a nice mushroom mousse to wrap the beef tenderloin in. We're gonna let this really sear caramelize and I'm gonna keep rolling it so the entire side of the tenderloin is nice, hard, dark caramelized and well seared and to lock in all those juices and the flavors of the tenderloin. And then I'm going to take all this really fine mush diced mushrooms um, and we're gonna caramelize them and make a paste out of it. And once you come back, I'll show you how we're going to fold it all together and how to assemble the, the Wellington. So 
So to continue with the beef wellington, uh, we have our caramelized mushrooms, and there's some onions and garlic, and I added a little bit of nutmeg, paprika, salt, and pepper. We're gonna put this mixture into a food processor, and we have a country style pate, just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to pulse this around to make a, a nice mushroom duck cell paste out of it. And that's all we need. And now we can start assembling the Wellington. So what you want to do is, um, with prosciutto, you can get the pre-sliced that has the wax paper in between each slice. You want to lay it out on parchment paper. It will help you roll it all up. You'll see in a second. And the tenderloin, I actually put it in a, the refrigerator to help cool it down so it kind of gets firm and it'll help with keeping it nice and medium rare, rare when we roast it off in the puff pastry. And this is the part that you can do ahead of time and just let it sit in your refrigerator if you wanna do a dinner party on you know, on the weekend or something, on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday, and you had time on Friday to knock out the Wellington part. So you just wanna shingle out the prosciutto, and you wanna kinda of eyeball it that you can wrap it all the way around your tenderloin, at least one full layer. Once you have your prosciutto rolled out, you can take your mushroom duxelle, Moose and spread it out onto the prosciutto. Leave a little bit of space so you have room to kind of roll it upon itself. And you put your tenderloin in the middle. And this is where Assembling it on the parchment paper makes it, your life a little bit easier. And then you can take the whole tenderloin roll and put it onto the puff pastry. And I want to point something out, uh, especially with this because there's so much potential for moisture inside the Wellington. I like to bake it on a roasting pan that allows the heat to convect underneath the, to get to the bottom of the, the puff pastry that's on the bottom of the Wellington. And then to make it easier to slide off the roasting rack, put a piece of parchment paper and it'll allow the, the air to circulate around it. And then you can take the puff pastry and roll it around. Stretch it just a little bit to make a seam. If you need to, you can always, just like the turnover with the mushrooms, you can take some of the puff pastry and fold it over to the bottom to reinforce the bottom. And then before we put it on the parchment paper, we're gonna brush it with some egg wash. And we're gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. So this is gonna go in a 415, 430 degree oven, maybe 20 minutes, and then we're gonna let it rest for about five minutes. And while this is in the oven, we'll start on the brandy demi cream sauce. The Wellington is in the oven and is done, so we'll pull that out so it can rest. And while it's resting, we can make a quick pan sauce, a brandy cream sauce, and then we'll be able to plate. 
Let's go get the Wellington. We'll let this rest so the juices can come back into the tenderloin. Just run a knife through some garlic. And we're gonna use the same pan. I haven't washed it, done anything with it. I wanted all the little bits of the garlic and the onion, the mushrooms and the tenderloin, all those flavors that are on the pan and in the pan, I want them to be there. We're just gonna sweat out the garlic just a real little bit. We're gonna deglaze with some brandy. Let that reduce just a few moments. Then we'll add some heavy whipping cream, season it, and then by then, the Wellington should be good to slice. So we're just gonna let this reduce down to a nice nappe consistency, and we'll be able to plate. So I just realized that I probably said a word that some of you may or may not know, and that's nappe. So nappe means to coat the back of a spoon. So if you run your finger through your sauce on the back of a spoon, then you know that it's a nice consistency and it's gonna glaze your food. It's called nappe. So we are ready to plate. And this is a good Sunday brunch party kind of dish to do. Shingle it out so you can see the tenderloin and the mushrooms and all your hard work. And we'll just take the sauce and glaze it over the top. And there you go, one beef wellington. Hope you try it at your house. Enjoy cooking. Till next time, I'm Chef James Jens with Dinners with Class on Cuisines and Cocktails.